Hello to all of my lovely YouTube followers. I thought it was about time for me to go ahead and do a quick tutorial on how to digitize your hand lettering or calligraphy. This is something I get questions about a lot, um, especially from fellow calligraphers, um, a lot of them who follow me through Instagram. So I thought it would be good for me to just do a quick walkthrough um, of what I do in the process. I have only been using Photoshop consistently for the past year, so I'm still pretty new at this and I still remember what it feels like to be a beginner and to feel like you have no idea what you're doing. But I want to let you know that as long as you continue to practice within this program, you will be able to learn it much quicker than you think. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the Photoshop window just a bit here. And we're going to go ahead and make a new Photoshop file. Now I do have Adobe Photoshop CC, the 2017 version, so mine is the most updated. I'm going to go ahead and just do um, one of my go-to sizes is a 3 by 4 inch. I'm going to click on that one and then if you are digitizing it um, to be used for invitations or something like that, maybe thank you cards or a print, you're going to want to make sure that your resolution is at least 300 pixels per inch. That is what I normally use. And right now we're in Roy G. Biv color, but we're going to want to switch that to CMYK just on the chance that we will be printing this. Um, it's okay to keep the file in Roy G. Biv if it's only going to be seen digitally, but if you're planning on printing this, then you want it to be set up with the CMYK color option. The background contents I'm going to go ahead and leave as white. Advanced options I'm not going to touch for now, and I'm going to go ahead and call this the Hello Digitizing. And that is because I'm going to be digitizing the word hello. What I just did there was hit the command and the minus sign to zoom out a little bit. If I hit the command plus, then I zoom in, command minus to zoom out. All right, so one of the first things that you're going to see on my screen is just obviously we have all these different options down on the left side here, and then we have even more options on the right side here. So at first glance, this can actually be very overwhelming if you are new to this, but I just want you to follow along as closely as possible so that I can take you through the necessary steps and the necessary tools to digitize your hand lettering or calligraphy. Now, I actually take all of my photos of my work with my iPhone, believe it or not. These are my downloads um, because I actually just airdrop a lot of the photos directly from my iPhone to my computer. So once you have your file, whether it's on your desktop um, or in your finder, um, obviously I am doing this on a Mac, not a PC, then go ahead and just drag your file into Photoshop. And there it is. It's just going to appear right there. And you want to you are going to want to go ahead and hit the enter button. Once you hit enter, it will be officially loaded into Photoshop. You want to make sure that X that was over the picture goes away. And you're going to notice here on the side that we have two different layers and the image that I just dragged in is its own layer. It just says image 3309 and that was exactly what it was titled down here when I pulled it from my downloads. And then we have the background as well. It's important to pay attention to your layers because that is um, the layers are something that you're going to be playing with just a little bit when you digitize your lettering. For example, right here, this little eye icon, if I click on that, that hides the layer that I just dragged into Photoshop. It, and as you can see, my mouse is being held over it and it says indicates layer visibility. If I click it again, it reappears. The same thing will happen with my background as well. When I set up the file, I set up my background file to just be white. And right now, if I click this, 
you're not going to see anything happen because image 3309, that layer is on top of the background. But let me show you something real quick. If I go ahead and hide our image first and then hide the background, I am going to be left with this grid. It's gray and white. And what this means is that means that any of those areas are transparent. And that is something super important to know when you're using Photoshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and make both of my layers visible again. And the very first thing that we want to do um, is to use our selection tool that is up here. Um, this one is called the rectangular tool selection tool. This one's called the lasso tool. You can use either of them if you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and just use the rectangular option and I'm going to surround the word hello with the rectangular box, just like this. And I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to layer it via a copy. All right, so now what you can't tell, once again, it's really tricky to see these things, is that there's actually two copies of the word hello now and they're directly on top of each other. And if you look over to the right here, you're gonna see our original image, image 3309, and layer one, that's the new layer I created. Let's go ahead and hide image 3309. And when you hide it, you see that layer one, just the word hello, is left against the background. Now, the reason that I did that is because hello is the word that I'm going to be digitizing, and I didn't want anything else on here to be left. I have the remainder of a different sketch for a client down here, and then I have the top of my paper up here, and I just don't want those to be included in the lettering at all. So, like I said, I used the rectangular tool, I right-clicked, and I layered it via a copy. So now we have an additional layer on the top here. Now, let's go ahead and just take image 3309, click on it and make sure it's selected and drag that down to the trash. Now we're just left with the word hello. We did not have a use for any of the other objects um, that were on that piece of paper. So now we've just gone ahead and gotten really specific with the area that we want to digitize. Now, something else that you should know if you're a beginner is that if I were to use the selection tool right now, and say I just wanted to select this half of the word. I just want to select these letters. If I were to try to do anything right now, I would not be able to because I have clicked on the background layer. That means that the computer and that the program is reading that you're trying to do something with the background. And if we're looking at just the background without this layer, there's nothing there for you to change. So make sure that you are clicked on the layer that you are working with. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead. Oops, that is not what I wanted to do. I'm gonna hit undo and I'm gonna release that selection real quick. It went ahead and tried to free transform the layer, but that's not something that I'm gonna cover quite yet. All right, so now we have our layer one and we have the background. I have selected layer one because we are going to be editing that specifically. And here's what I wanna do. Right down here, this little button symbolizes, is kind of the universal symbol for contrast, that circle with the light and the dark part on it. And the cue that it brings up is to create a new fill or adjustment layer. And what we're going to be doing is creating an adjustment layer for the levels. So the levels is how we are going to be able to edit this, um, edit this lettering. So let's go ahead and click on that. And we're gonna see this little chart show up right here. You'll see the CMYK because that is what, um, <laughs> that is what our file is built as. And then you're gonna see um, this little chart down here. And what we need to do is take this little, um, I'll just call them the little triangle, the triangle on the far right, take that and drag that past 
what I call like the mountain, that's kind of a good way to describe it, is as long as you're taking pictures in a good lighting, you have very high and low contrast. So as long as you drag the little triangle, the one on the far right past the mountain, then you're really lightening um, the some of the um, coloring in the image. Hopefully that, that makes sense. I don't think I said that super clearly. So once again, that's what it looks like before. And once we drag it up, that's what it looks like after. And we're also gonna wanna move the triangle from the left closer as well to get um, the contrast to be darker. This looks great. So now that we've done that, the levels are also operating as their own layer right now. You can kind of see it down here on the right. If I were to hide them, you would see our hello just as it was before the edits. So I'm gonna go ahead and view it again, but the key to making it stick is to hit Command to choose your layer that you're editing, then hit Control or right click, whichever one you use, and you're going to go ahead and merge these layers. All right, so we've gone ahead and merged them. So now that hello with the kind of gray and beige coloring, that layer is gone because we've merged it with the levels to um, create what we currently have in front of us. If I hide my background, you're gonna see the hello again, but in its new and edited form. Now, something that's really important for when you're digitizing your lettering is that you don't necessarily want to have all of this white background behind your lettering. Um, when you do end up moving your lettering into Illustrator later, if you take that step, um, I'm not going to cover it in this video, but if you do that, you cannot have a white background because you're not gonna be able to trace your lettering accurately. So we want to go ahead and get rid of the white layer, um, or the white background, excuse me, that is on the same layer as our lettering. What we're gonna do to do that is go over to the eraser icon, the eraser tool. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna click the magic eraser tool. Now the tolerance um, in this one is not going to matter too much because we have a really good contrast. Obviously the hello is black and the background is white. That's pretty much the biggest contrast that you can get. I'm going to go ahead and click on the white space and voila, that entire white space has been removed and you're left with just your lettering. Now I can move this anywhere that I would want on the piece. I'll bring my background back. So this is what it looks like against the background. So maybe I wanted to drag in a picture here um, of me. That's a total possibility if I want to do that. Um, but right now, since I'm just sticking with the basics, I'm going to tell you a couple more things about the lettering um, and what else we can do in Photoshop if we want to tweak things a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the background again, and I'm going to go ahead and do the Command Plus to zoom in. And you'll see as we get closer that you can see a little bit of the different pigmentation within the letter. Uh, within the lettering, it's not exactly all black, but overall, that is not going to make a huge difference. Now, there are a couple things about this hello that I don't love and that I would like to try to edit a little bit. Now, if you can, writing out your words to your best, the best of your ability or in their most perfect form before you scan them in is always a really good option because then you don't have much editing to do. But let's say that you do make a mistake and it is the option that you want to use, always know that you can edit that in Photoshop. Now, I'm going to go ahead and return back to what I was talking about before, to being clicked on the wrong layer because this used to happen to me a lot when I started and I did not understand what I was doing wrong. So I'm going to click on the background. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select the normal eraser tool. Okay, so Photoshop went ahead and gave me an error and it told me could not use the eraser because the target layer is hidden. 
I'm gonna go ahead and say okay and I'm going to visualize or include the background, excuse me. There, now we can see the background again. So I'm selected on the background and I want to delete this part of the H over here. I don't like how this looks, but let's see what happens when I try to erase that when I'm on the wrong layer. there's nothing happening. And this is because I am currently clicked on the background and I'm not clicked on our levels one, which by the way, if it gets a little too confusing, you can click on this, double click to rename it, and I'll go ahead and rename it hello. All right, so now let's try this again. I was clicked on the background before, and now I am on the actual hello layer, and I'm going to go ahead and use the eraser tool to take off that tail of the H that I didn't like. Perfect. So that's gone. And let's go ahead and zoom in here to see if there's anything else. It gets a little grainy when you're zoomed in pretty close, but that is pretty common. The closer you zoom in, the more pixelated that it is going to get. So just be aware of that. Now, right now, I want to go ahead and change this part of the E right here. It's just not a very smooth transition, and I'd like to erase um, a, just a bit of it, but my eraser tool is far too big, because if I click that, I'm deleting the entire line. So I'll go ahead and undo that, and we'll go up here to the left and click on the little down arrow next to the circle that says 41. That's how big your eraser brush is. And we're gonna go ahead and drag down the size until we get a much smaller brush. This is much better. So now I can gently go in here to just smooth out that part of the E that I didn't like as much. That was something I was able to notice when I was zoomed out and I thought it would be a good thing for me to probably try to fix. All right, so now we have our final version of the word hello in a digital form. And this can be used on um, a program or a brochure. Maybe you're making thank you notes um, with the word thank you um, or really any other digital item that you're making, you could use this word on. Um, I'm not covering vectorizing right now. I'll try to make a video to follow up on that and when you do need to ve vectorize, when you don't need to vectorize. Um, but for now, I just wanted to teach those of you who are brand new to Photoshop how to at least get your, get your lettering and your calligraphy into the system. So this is the very ver first step of that. And if you do have any questions or comments about what I've done, then go ahead and make sure to leave them below. Thanks so much, guys.